Bonjour, my friends. How are you? Thank you for tuning in for Wine with Wanda on Instagram Live. Believe it or not, this is episode 23. I started this back in April. It's been about four months now. So uh, what a journey it's been traveling through wine. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Today is actually the season finale, Sam. This is a series. This is a show. So today is the season finale, but I will be back in September with new episodes. So for the season finale, I wanted to go out with something special. I wanted to end with a bit of ooh la la. And today's guests, Christina and Nicolas Seyan of Chateau La Segue in Bordeaux and Verite in Sonoma are absolutely ooh la la. Both wineries are a joint venture with Jackson Family Wines and Nicolas is the winemaker of Vigneron at Chateau La Segue in Bordeaux and his wife Christina manages the production. Back in the U.S., his father Pierre, alongside his daughter Nicolas' sister, Hélène, they are the winemaker and assistant winemaker at Verite. And if you ever doubted the power of wine to bring people together, Nicola and Christina met when he addressed the wine group that she belonged to, the Yale Law Wine Society. So if you know me, you know I love a great wine story. So today we have Bordeaux, we have Sonoma, we have love. What more do we need to end this season of Wine with Wanda? So before I pull Nicola and Christine into the chat, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be tasting today. So from La Segue, we're tasting the San Emilion Grand Cru 2016. This is a Bordeaux, of course, and this retails for about $60 in the US. So wine I've had several vintages over the years, and it's just always consistent, but always expressive and so beautiful. So I'm really excited to revisit this. And when I promised ooh la la, I wasn't kidding. Today we have a bottle from Sonoma, the wine made by Pierre Seyan and his daughter Hélène, Verité La Désir 2016. It is also a blend and we'll get into that later. This wine costs $425. That is not a mistake. 425 serious ooh la la, but we're gonna talk about why. I think it's important that we get into what makes this wine so special. So here we go. Let's hoping as always. This is the moment where I pray that the Instagram forces are on our side. Bring our guests on with no problem. And I think they're coming. I think they are. Hello, everyone out there, all the Bordeaux fans. I see you. Oh, I see something happening. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Hi, how are you? We are very well, thank you. We we just landed last night from California, and we really? arrived. Really? Yes, in Saint Emilion. So this is the true life of the jet setting winemaker. You're experiencing it very yes. well because we are jet lagged. But very this is the real deal. Well, I'll try not to ask any Barbara Walters gotcha questions in recognition of your jet lag. So I guess I know. How are you? How long were you in California? Just uh, just for the summer. Um, so what we normally do is we s trade off a bit with Nicolas' father, my father-in-law, Pierre, who, as you said, okay. uh, is, is at Verite as well. So when Pierre comes to France, we tend to be in California and vice versa. So we're doing a one-week overlap with Pierre, who is here somewhere. Oh, wonderful. Uh, do a nice, a nice clean handoff before Nicola and I will take over for the bottling of the 2018 vintage and then the harvest of 2020. How is the harvest looking? It's looking great so far. We were extremely lucky uh, this year at La Seg, due to the position of the estate on the hills of Saint Emilion, we were uh, thankfully we were not affected by certain issues at the beginning of the year, uh, including some frost. So we are we were very privileged uh, to to avoid uh, this negative impact. So it's looking promising. We, we are experiencing right now a very dry and hot summer. Okay. So for that as well, we are also very happy to benefit from the um, uh, uh, local care. Uh, clay, clay, limestone. Clay, clay limestone structure of the soil. It's also 
a fantastic advantage. And uh, but first of all, Wanda, thank you for the introduction. <laughs> we were we were smiling at your introduction. Ah! <laughs> but I want to I want to tell you everything shiny is not gold. <laughs> <laughs> That is true. As my grandmother would say, don't take any wooden nickels. It's kind of the same concept. <laughs> But you know, I am a hopeless romantic. So I feel that my first question has to be about the love story. It's like Cupid and Bacchus came together to bring you two together. So tell us a little bit about that day at the Yale Law Wine Club, well, which sounds fascinating. Lawyer. And at, at, at Yale, where I was at law school, um, one of my primary occupations, I won't say my primary occupation in case I have any professors watching, um, was <laughs> a wine society and we did we did blind tasting competitions we did chateau and winemaker visits and we were really quite active we had a really good uh following among the law school business school and the larger yale community and one of our special guests um we really wanted to invite the seon family to come mm -hmm. share wines with us um, verte Oh, in Tuscany. So we sort of sent an email out into the void to some info at email address that we assume no one checked. But then miraculously, months later, um, someone responded that Pierre's son, Nicola, actually was in the area, very close by New Haven, Connecticut, um, in Greenwich, and would be very happy to come do a tasting and dinner with us. How true that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> But that is how we met. So the wines, um, including the wines you see today, I, I guess so, not the same vintage. Not um, the same vintage, but we, I did present on that specific occasion, which we remember very well, at least I do, uh, <laughs> uh, the, these two particular wines. And um, Wanda, to your point, very often it's, um, it's people related. These wines have a certain style and have their, their own signature but they do have a common denominator. Even one is from Sonoma in California, the other one is very far away from Sonoma in uh, But the styles are uh, very similar uh, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, characteristics of the wines, elegance, power, complexity. So we can go uh, for uh, a number of uh, details. Um, But I always go back to the basics. And the basics for us started with the, uh, the, the, the vision of, uh, of a man when Jeff Jackson and his wife, uh, Barbara Banki, uh, had in mind to develop a project one day in Sonoma. And uh, we are so proud, of course, today to be presenting this wine and sharing this wine with you, Verité, Le Désir, which is one of the three uh, mm -hmm. eyes of this winery. Uh, and the reason why we picked with you this uh, specific label, Le Désir, is because it's Cabernet Franc oriented in the blend. And of course, La Seg in Saint-Emilion is about Cabernet Franc. Saint-Emilion is a Cabernet Franc expression in Bordeaux. So it makes sense. To, See the not, connection. To, to make the connection. It's not about comparing, but they recognize each other, I think. They recognize each other. And here, when again, when Jess and Barbara developed this um, project, they needed somebody, they needed the key. They needed the key to open the door, and they found my father. And uh, my, my father uh, created the Verité uh, wines. It started with La Muse, which is another label at Verité, and La Muse is more Merlot-oriented. Then he also developed, he, he made the Verité La Joie, which is more Cabernet Sauvignon. And he was missing something that he always wanted to do all his life, which is, by the way, in California, Wanda, Cabernet Franc is quite challenging to, to, to cultivate and to reach a world-class level. Not to say that Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon are easy. It's not that. Mm -hmm. Cabernet, Franc, Cabernet Franc definitely requires at least some experience. And you, you don't have this varietal growing all over the world as the Merlot and the Cabernet Sauvignon. That's true. But my father had a fantastic experience in the Loire Valley. 
uh, when he was young, he went to the Loire Valley, working for Chateau de Targé in the Loire Valley. And today, my uh, godchild, uh, Paul Pisani, uh, is uh, at the head of this estate. And we, um, we are um, extremely pleased today, yes, to, to present you these, these, two, these two wines. Yeah. And we were especially happy to choose the 16 vintage because that was the first vintage um, we worked together mm -hmm. um, here at Le Seg and ah. the harvest with yes. Pierre and mm -hmm. Alain um, for the harvest of Verite 2016 and came immediately after for Le Seg. So this was really our first vintage um, where I was involved. So we're really always a special connection to taste it and really happy to taste it with you today. Well, mm. thank you. That's so sweet. Well, before we get into the wines, I want to step back a little. So Nicola is a seventh generation winemaker, correct? <laughs> yes, with my sister, Helen. With your sister, Helen. Did you always <laughs> know you would follow in your family's footsteps or did you think of being a lawyer at one point? <laughs> I thought of being a banker because my ah. job was working in a, in a bank uh, and um, at some point I, I, I went on the other side of the force and I came back to the family and, um, and my sister had a very similar um, approach as well and together two two today uh, Hélène more in um, Sonoma with Verité. And today we are going to taste our blend here with the 2016. Mm -hmm. And me, a little bit more uh, uh, at La Seig, but we really switch very, we swap very easily. And we are in contact every day. Great. And Christina, where did your passion for wine came from? I never think of Yale Law students having a lot of time to drink and taste wine in yeah. such a serious way. So love to hear your journey to wine. Funny, there actually are quite a lot of a lot of lawyers, especially you know, corporate law was my field, corporate tax. For some reason, and I've never figured out why, there is something about lawyers and wine. Perhaps we appreciate, you know, the marriage of precision, knowledge, and artistry. Um, but there really are a lot of uh, wine aficionados among the legal community, and it actually was at Yale. Before in, in, in college and in my previous jobs, I, I always enjoyed wine, but I wouldn't say I was a, a huge connoisseur or as knowledgeable, certainly, as I am today. It really was in law school and getting involved um, with the Wine Society, doing blind tastings a lot, uh, mostly on Bordeaux, comparing um, different wines, different vintages, that I really started to see um, the really incredible depth of the field and amazing, amazing things that are happening in the world of wine. So by the time I, I graduated, I, I did want to come work a, a wine harvest in my time off the, taking the bar exam in New York and um, starting, starting a firm job. So I, it really was during in law school and, and after that I really kind of found uh, my passion for wine. And I think that there actually are many of us out there, although I may be a little bit unique in having actually run off to join the circus. Um, and make <laughs> well, I think you, you definitely need to write a memoir. I think this would be such a great <laughs> film, you know, your life, how you met. So okay. keep that in mind. <laughs> So should we get into the wine? Should we start with the Blaseg Bordeaux, everyone? Here's the bottle, 2016, yeah. saint Emilion Grand Cru. I don't speak French. I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, the, the, the vintage 2016 in saint Emilion uh, belong to, the, to the, the, the vintages with a relatively high reputation in, uh, in Bordeaux. So this vintage has a good reputation in uh, all the appellations of Bordeaux, including saint Emilion. Mm -hmm. um, we, we at La Seg uh, manage very carefully uh, the way we do the viticulture and followed by the way we do the vinifications and then the aging ultimately to reach the blending time. Uh, we start with a micro cru concept, which is a philosophy that my father uh, uh, really reinforced very early with uh, Verité. And you can do micro uh, philosophy when you have the micro -cruise. And I come back to, uh, to the vision of the Jackson family, um, uh, Jess, Barbara, and today their children. And we were not so long ago with, uh, with Christopher, uh, Christopher Jackson. Uh, and also we, we, we were very close also with um, Katie and Julia. And this is a 
family, family story, but coming back to the roots about the soil, the quality of the soil, the origins of the grapes, where the vineyard finds their energy, finds their style, that ultimately we just try as vigneron, uh, uh, which is a type of winemaker, as vigneron we try to express what Mother Nature is giving us. And the 2016 La Segue, as the, 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 the belonging to this fantastic vintage, is great, but at the end we really need to perform and try to really truly express the vintage. And we mm-hmm. uh, have vintage variations in Bordeaux that relatively common, that uh, one sh- when you follow a specific chateau, a specific estate, you will notice the vintage uh, variations. And it's quite similar with Verité as well, which is also a great uh, characteristics of uh, Verité that we're going to talk just after. So the vintage 16 of um, La Seg uh, um, was ro- not, not to say easier than others, but I say it because we have... <laughs> We had two challenges with others to, to, to face. The 2016 was more approachable from a logistic standpoint. It was more a question of really paying attention to certain details. So, of course, the, the, sing- the single most important consideration remains the pruning, as mm-hmm. in any, any estate, probably. Um, and talk about that a little. You know, we always have a mix of people who know a lot about wine and some that are new. Why is the pruning so important? With the pruning, Wanda, you not only you prepare the coming harvest, you prepare the fruit uh, at the end of the of the season, but you also prepare the woods, the woods, uh, the woods of the vine for the following vintage. Mm-hmm. So it's, your decisions are extremely critical for the. Uh, medium-term evolution of your vineyard. Uh, when you when you decide to, to 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 prune with a certain style, you really go in a certain direction in terms of yields, in terms of uh, uh, yields volume. I mean, uh, in in terms of extraction, in terms of um, establishment of the uh, of the root system. So th- there are so many ways you can influence the vine. If you prune too long. Uh, for the for a baby vine, it will be very challenging because the baby vine is also trying to 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 prepare its root network. Mm-hmm. Un too long for the vine will be for the young vine it will be challenging. So it's all about balance and it's starting truly with the pruning. And you have you have a lot of varieties, vast uh, different types of pruning in Saint Emilion at La Seg, We use the Guillot pruning the simple guillot pruning. So uh, it's a decision also that uh, not only us are doing, it's vastly utilized in the appellation. Of course. But it, does, it gives us uh, a lot of uh, uh, good results and it allows us to really manage the, the vigor of the vines and adjust to, um, to the evo- evolution of the environment with the weather. Because these days, we do have to, of course, say we are facing uh, particularly more warm uh, weather conditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, with, uh, with California, we, are, we, are, we, have, uh, we have a way to, 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 to bring some response uh, by... Uh, Excuse all the New York City background noise. <laughs> <laughs> Special effects included for free. <laughs> So yes, so the pruning yeah. is uh, is truly the very single most uh, consideration for us. Of course, uh, just after the selection of the soils, the rootstocks, etc. Yes. Um, the pruning is truly essential, and uh, for um, for the rest of this uh, of this um, vintage, we also pay particular attention to the uh, to the micro crues I was just mentioning earlier. And on the coat of Saint Emilion, on the coat of Saint Emilion, you do have, uh, you do benefit from several things. Not only the fantastic sun exposure, which is south southwest, mm-hmm. but also, uh, natural drainage. And in Bordeaux, as you know, it might rain sometimes. Very exactly. Hard. So when you have your vines on slopes in Bordeaux, it's also an advantage in terms of natural draining. And then the other very important consideration is 
the collection of different soils we have. Because when you're on the slope, uh, your, uh, your different soils eroded over time and you, mm -hmm. you, you have different soils in the different steps, uh, spots on the, on the slope. So we start from the uh, limestone of Asteri, uh, which is quite famous in the Appellation saint Emilion. It goes from, uh, from, the very top, uh, from the very top of the hills mm -hmm. and to the bottom line, to the foothill of the hills, where we, where we have more uh, uh, sandy uh, type of soil. And in between, we have the molas du Fronsade. We have a nice collection of different soils. And this is truly essential to realize. When we, when we started at the estate, we started to really observe. It's a lot about observation. The big mistake to make is to arrive with, um, to arrive with a protocol and say, this is my protocol mm -hmm. for, for the planet Earth. No, you have to adjust. In Sonoma, we do certain things. In Bordeaux, and uh, uh, when, we, when we pay attention to this micro cruise, it's extremely important. Um, so we really observe uh, how the different varietals will evolve uh, at every step during the evolution of the vintage. And we try to keep separated those different micro crews. So you might have one large block of Merlot, but underground of this block might be different at the top corner versus the opposite corner at the bottom part of the block. We separate the grapes in different tanks. And, and they're is... ripening at different times as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why it's, these kind of details are extremely important. And we did, uh, we did uh, design. My father was extremely meticulous at selecting the right equipment with specific size tanks uh, to really reflect this variety of different soils in the, in the, in the, in the vineyard. My understanding is the Laseg vines are also quite old. Yeah, that's Absolutely. right. It was done to, to really keep the estate uh, as, uh, as it was because we really no noticed the very high quality of the vineyard. The, the condition of the vineyard was truly excellent. We had to make few adjustments back in 2003, which was our first vintage. And over the years now, we really see the, the evolution of the improvement of the quality uh, over the last vintages with good quality work performed by our team in the vineyard, which is the single most important. Then, in the, when you are in the cellar, as you know, you take what you get. And uh, if you really perform and pay attention to these details during the during the season in the vineyard, mm -hmm. usually you are much, much less surprised. You exactly. know that pruning, that care, that attention to the exactly. different soils and microclimates. So let's taste the wine. Now, you already know that I'm a fan. I believe we <laughs> corresponded maybe a year ago because I tasted the 2016 and uh, it's so much fun to revisit it with you. <laughs> Thank yes. you. This is a really, really beautiful wine. We're always it happy. really is. So this, uh, this vintage really de reflect, to me it's like a champion, uh, a champion. A champion uh, is, uh, uh, is complex, is uh, powerful, has style, has elegance. And the 2016 belongs to, to this high quality uh, vintage, well perceived uh, by um, our connoisseurs and uh, our, um, our, uh, the people who follow, follow La SEG. So we, we are extremely happy today in 2020 to taste it again. And today is a great occasion with you. Uh, we, we really like the, to, to really follow the evolution of the tannins. And uh, today I'm extremely happy with the evolution and how the, the softness of the, mm -hmm. of the tannins in particular uh, are quite remarkable. Uh, and then it gives uh, maybe an easier approach uh, in, the, in the tasting to really discover the intensity of the fruit. First of all, the aromas mm -hmm. are, are quite elegant. And here, it's a big objective for a Saint-Emilion. Huh? Saint-Emilion, among the different characteristics, include the, 
the elegance, which is uh, uh, the, the nice complexity of the different varietals, Merlot in majority, Cabernet Franc, very important in the blend, and we are lucky at La Sec to also benefit from some Cabernet Sauvignon, which is not so small. It can go up in certain vintages up to 15%. Oh, wow, that much sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's for Saint Emilion, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, not that common. Um, and uh, it's really expressing in the, in the style of the wine as well. Uh, the, the structure is definitely there. Uh, when I said the tannins are very soft, not to say that still the, the structure of the wine is truly present, but it's quite approachable with uh, uh, the softness of the tannins and how delicate just behind uh, the introduction to the concentration of the, of the, of the palette is quite interesting to discover. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm such, I love the opulence, but the approachability. To me, it's the perfect balance of those two. It's rich, so many layers of flavor, the fruit, the spice, the earth, the mineral, but it's very approachable. Everything is so in balance that I always call this the sweet spot wine that I can share with people who are experts go, who catch all of that. And friends mm -hmm. who don't know will just say, oh, wow, this is delicious. And yeah. that's kind of the highest compliment. You want it exactly. to be delicious. <laughs> to be enjoyed I and mean, that really yeah. is, is why we make it. it it's nice to discuss the technical elements as well mm -hmm. it is meant to it is meant to be enjoyed but yes. I with you it's i always i always notice the importance of the concept of balance mm -hmm. balance is truly essential the, 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 the intensities of the food is right but you need balance in terms of acidity and also it's a wine that is um, quite digest to, 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 to drink it's not, uh, it's not uh, too, too powerful you see no, what I mean? No, not at all, yes the acidity uh, keeps it very lively and graceful some things that we just harvest from the hills of saint Emilion, and these are the characteristics of the fruit coming from those hills, we might. The challenge is like you know harvesting a coconut, a banana, or any fruit. You, when you when you when you eat these fruits, when you go to the farmers market, you say, oh, I had a fantastic pear today. But these fruits happen to grow in a fantastic environment. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning they ripe and they have a nice level of sugar, but at the same time, they have, they still maintain a nice level of acidity. Exactly. And, critical to truly cultivate, maintain, and transmit all the way to the bottom. No, really, do. I'm going to show the bottle again. I see a few people just tuned in. So this is what you're looking for out there. This is the Le Sec 2016 Santa Million Grand Cru, and it's about $60, and it's beautiful. I mean, really, it's a, for all of you younger people who say, oh, I want a red blend. Bordeaux is like the original red blend. <laughs> Red blend is not a new trend, people. <laughs> Bordeaux's been doing it a long time and very well. <laughs> no, we are, we are very happy because uh, what is interesting also with this wine is as of today, one day, you can totally open a bottle of 2016 and uh, really enjoy this wine. Yes. Uh, before, uh, before a dinner, during a dinner, but also it's a wine that has a, cap has a capacity to age. And um, that's why earlier I was talking about the champion. You can, it's approachable today, but it's also totally fine to age it for several decades, as long as you have a good cork. And we make sure we have corks because, you know, my grandfather was a cork maker. Oh, so I didn't know that. Oh, I, wow. have to be, I have to be careful in the selection of the quality of the corks. Great. What was the first vintage of Le Seg that, that, that was produced? Um, what was uh, the first vintage? 2003, okay. when, with Jess and Barbara and my parents, when they decided to, to, to take over and to invest in this property. But, but the chateau predates that by, by many years, has, oh, yeah. has been here since the 18th century. Mm -hmm. um, so this was the, 2003 was the first vintage um, that Nicolas' father um, was making the wine, but the, the chateau, which is beautiful, I hope you'll able, be able to visit someday. And I hope so too. <laughs> been here for quite a long time and the vines as well yeah. yes do you want to talk a little bit about your sundials i know that's definitely a part of your uh, identity and, and the yeah. branding right the, the label uh, the label of course you can totally recognize it from very far away mm -hmm. 
they call um, is is uh, the, the design of La Seg. And La Seg, as I said earlier, is located on the hills facing south, southwest. And we and should remind people, this is the right bank of, of Florida, yeah. right? So, so on people course, are you know, Bordeaux, in a little geography. 57 patients in Bordeaux, 120-ish thousand hectares. Saint-Emilion is 5,400 hectares. It's one of the appellation. And in this appellation, La Seg is approximately geographically in the center of the appellation okay. where the hills where the hill of saint emilion is located so at the top of the hill you have the plateau and at the foothill followed by all the valley and uh, uh, this uh, this estate uh, was uh, well selected way before us by some other families before us and they understood how important it was already of course at the time to to develop uh, world-class wines in the top areas. So the, the cadran definitely reflects the exposure of the vineyard. It gives a time in the past. In the past, the sand dials used to mainly give the time to the people working in the vineyards in front mm -hmm. of the... It was a very important uh, tool, a very important uh, uh, tool for the, for the people working around. And we thought it was extremely important to, to really emphasize this, uh, this characteristic of the, of, the, of the vineyard. And here, uh, uh, we, we know it's uh, maybe not as classic as you can expect for a, for a, for a label from Bordeaux. But I, I tell you, it's a, it's a 2018 design. So it's not that, mo it's not that modern. Huh? It's a, <laughs> Design. And if you, if you do ever come to visit, you will see, I mean, this is a graphic representation, but we do have the two sundials on the facade of the chateau. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> so Santa Mignon is an UNESCO World Heritage Site. So folks, when we're able to travel again, just keep mm -hmm. these little facts in mind. <laughs> so much wine and so much history. So now we're going to head to the new world, right? With Verite. And Verite. The desire. <laughs> the, the desire, the desire, the desire in English. And uh, because it was always the desire of my father one day ah. um, to, to craft some, um, some Cabernet Franc in California. And uh, it, was, uh, it took a little bit longer to develop this specific uh, wine. Uh, again, I said earlier, the, the first two wines at the winery Verité were... Uh, Verité, Lamuse, Merlot, and Cabernet Sauvignon based. This one came a few years later to give the time to my okay. to take the time in the vineyard to really select the quality of fruit he was truly expecting. And, um, and more um, in, the, in the more recent vintages, Hélène, my sister, uh, is uh, in charge of all the blends. Uh, my father is still present, but Hélène is truly in charge of the, of the winery today. And uh, it remains also an objective that is not that easy to achieve every vintage, particularly for the Cabernet Franc. Mm -hmm. uh, coming back to what you said earlier, Wanda, the balance. Uh, and, uh, the, the balance for Verité is also uh, the, the challenge to, to meet every vintage. And we, as a family, and Hélène at the head is... Uh, truly working uh, with this objective uh, to balance. Uh, in California, uh, we try to avoid, of course, uh, too much alcohol. We need... Uh, of course. And uh, the peaking day are ex extremely essential. But also, we spoke earlier about the pruning. The pruning is also extremely important. In California, uh, maybe the audience might not uh, know the details of what's happening in, uh, in Sonoma, uh, next to Napa. But we had been experiencing some very um, drought, dry, yeah, dry. Very, very dry, very dry and intense. Here we decided to, um, to, to say uh, with, with this vintage, it's another occasion to show, uh, to show that uh, uh, coming back to the concept of balance starts with a pruning. And we had to adjust uh, some pruning uh, decision uh, ah. in terms of verite. And here I really want to say how amazing 
the, the, crew of, the crews of people working in the vineyard as well in California, France and California, they are truly extraordinary. And uh, I really thank them because behind, we are extremely careful with the fruit they honor us with, but um, I, I, want to, I want to say, I want to emphasize, it's not that easy. And it's true. We always, I think when we do wine tastings, it's always a nice environment, nice glass, nice company. But it's true that as the growing cycle happens throughout the year, um, a lot of it is under the burning sun and yep. the rain and the snow. Okay. And it's true when you're really involved in, and you see really all the human effort um, that goes into producing any wine. Um, much less a really world-class wine. It makes you appreciate it even more, I think. And we are very close to the vineyards. Like uh, uh, this morning, my, my, my first hour, because we arrived last night, late last night in France, <laughs> the first thing before breakfast, I swear, before breakfast, before coffee, uh, before brushing teeth, before everything, mm -hmm. with my father, we went to the vineyards. Mm -hmm. First, oh, wow. first, first. Uh, Hélène, yesterday or the day before, she had a tour of the vineyards as well. She's constantly, particularly now that we are approaching the harvest time, we are talking about really, really fine tuning certain decisions to take when it comes the time to, to pick, and particularly in California. And, uh, and Verité Le Désir has this common denominator with, uh, with La Segue. Uh, not only the Cabernet Franc, which is obvious in the, in the, in the blend, but also, of course, the style. The style mm -hmm. the signature of the wine. These wines, my, my father will tell you, he likes, he likes these wines when they sing in his glass. You know, yeah. wines with energy, the wines with energy, wines with uh, the balance is essential again. But here, when we taste and we go one after the other, La Segue and Le Désir, we basically quite find quite interesting to see this common denominator in the sophistication of the grain of the wine. I really enjoy almost to, to chew sometimes, to really, really enjoy the purity of the management of the, of the, tan of the tannins here. Very, sim very similar to La Seg in the end because it's the same family of winemakers involved here. And um, I think it's, it's an exceptional achievement. Uh, the, the vintage 2016 in Sonoma was not that easy because sometimes people think, particularly from France, they might say, oh, in California, it's easier. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Oh, no. So you Different have... challenges, yes. Oh. When you have too much of a good thing, it can be an issue. And, uh, and here the whole team, again, in the vineyard and the crew in the, in the cellar are really, uh, really working uh, with the family, very close with the family to, to, to really make these decisions at the right time. And sometimes, Wanda, it can be a decision, in, the importance of this decision is just a few hours. When your, when your grapes, when your block of vines is ready for picking in Sonoma, you pick it now. Because if you wait for hours even sometimes, and if you happen to have a very dry and, um, and a very warm wind, it could be uh, bringing some complications at the time of harvest and after with the vinification. Well, even if the grapes would still, you know, look fine and taste good to almost anyone, um, the most important thing I think um, that is focused on at Verite is really capturing that freshness and that mm -hmm. of floral and mineral notes, which is very, very easy to miss when yeah, you they get too ripe. Summer, Absolutely. Have a hundred degree day a few times in a row and, and you can you can really miss the boat very quickly so that's why mm -hmm. those really instinctive decisions um working quickly and the responsiveness um in the winery of course is so important that's right is verity a relatively limited production uh, of wines relatively small uh, definitely uh, yeah. being limited of course of course it has limited in production in volume but we I can, I can assure you that so far, my observation, at least I can say, but I'm very sure Hélène and uh, my sister... Your Hélène, sister is watching. She's giving you some claps, uh, so you're doing a good job. <laughs> but I tell you, it's not limited in terms of complexity and uh, refinement of the wine, because back with the vintage of 1998, we, we were exploring. My father was truly exploring. He was... 
how do you say when people discover a new, a new a, like a pioneer he was a pioneer so for him he was going you know step by step extremely carefully and along and over the years he really discovered new aspects in Sonoma, new characteristics, new areas, new soils. So he has been adding new components. And Hélène has been watching uh, the, the, the evolution of mm -hmm. Verity. And today, of course, the 2016 truly benefit from this quite amazing, amazing uh, uh, complexity. And what's amazing about Sonoma County, I mean, if we're talking about old world versus new, is these discoveries are starting to happen. In Santa Million, there have been vines for hundreds, if not thousands of years. In Sonoma County, these discoveries of, of micro crews, parcels, the best place to plant Cabernet mm -hmm. from, we can talk even in matters of decades. So mm -hmm. it's interesting to think, you know, in the coming years, decades, centuries even, right, we'll come. Um, Erte and other great Sonoma wines as well, uh, where they will be someday. Elaine just left a comment. She wrote, Sonoma uh -huh. is still undiscovered, finding new micro crews every year. So, right. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. you nailed it. And I actually, I, I printed out a quote from her. She said, at Verite, I believe it is my duty and responsibility to keep the signature that my father created 20 years ago. So really honoring that tradition. And at the same time, She's also putting her own style because with the most recent vintage, <laughs> she did 100% of the blend. And ah. of course, I will agree with my father. My father would come to the table and in the end, of course, he must um, bless the vintage. But um, I, I agree. She, she, she does definitely protect uh, the history of the estate. But at the same time, I know I trust her judgment to... to, to to prepare Verité mm -hmm. to go to the, to the future, to approach the future with confidence. And for that, we were talking about earlier the different challenges we are facing, including fires. Uh, it, it, how challenging was the very last few vintages to really go through the fire. And, and we were extremely fortunate not to be impacted at Verité. But anyway, in terms of logistics, we had to really deploy a lot of um, efforts. The company was always, always responding positively with the, the enough equipment and the people were there. And, uh, and Hélène had to, to really uh, save the day because it was extremely difficult to sometimes even go to the winery. And when you are by yourself with hoses and pumps, but you have to work. Of <laughs> course, of course. I want to show the bottle again for folks just tuning in. So this is the Verité La Désir 2016. And this is actually part of a trio, La Muse and La Joie, correct? Mm -hmm. so this is the Cabernet Franc. So it is not inexpensive. It's $425. Uh, and, I... you know, I do want to talk about pricing a little because when I posted, I did get a couple people email me. Say, is that a typo? I said, no, it's not a typo. And I think you've touched on it a bit, that wine doesn't make itself, that it's an effort of love and labor, it's science, it's art. But you know, we have one bottle that's 60, also mm -hmm. all of those things went into it, and this one's a bit more. So do you want to talk a bit for people maybe who are uh, new to wine, who get a little scared when they see a price like that? Honda, it's a very important wow. consideration. At the end, we, I, I like to say that at the end, wine should not be put in a vault you know, or behind a vitrine and to admire, not touch. No, a wine mm -hmm. is to be opened and to be shared with friends, with family on specific occasion. I think we will all agree with that. Now, at the same time, a price, a price is a reflection of uh, several um, considerations here. First of all, the scarcity. The scarcity. Mm -hmm. Of, uh, of this wine and the, the demand for this wine. Uh, this wine has been recognized over the years with a very high reputation today. Yes, absolutely. And when we say it's competing, yes, it's competing, it's competing. It belongs to the same group of some other wines that sometimes are uh, 10 times more expensive. You know, Wanda. Of uh, course. Uh, the, the, the very famous names uh, of the world of Bordeaux, Burgundy, Sonoma, Napa, and some other areas in the world, mm -hmm. uh, extremely expensive as well. 
here. Uh, there, in, in certain cases, verite is still, for a very special occasion, of course, I think it's still possible to have the experience of verite. But at the same time, I want to remind everyone that when we said earlier that the family, and here I'm more thinking about uh, Jess, Barbara, and, uh, and, and, all the, and the whole the family, is truly investing for the long term. When mm -hmm. we, we, we present you a bottle of Verité today, we are talking about mountain vineyards. We are talking about development in terms of cost of production that are relatively high. Relatively of high. Of these vineyards, the sourcing of the fruit is sometimes, and quite often, very challenging. And I think mm -hmm. if you're involved um, in the wine industry, you might be rather surprised when a, a out the year, every small list decision, every leaf covering every oh. you know small bunch of grapes done by a human hand, yeah. hopefully a nice living wage. Though those hours, hundreds, thousands of man hours, um, really do really do add up. Um, so wine is definitely a, a labor of love, but there's a lot of labor. A lot of labor. Especially the more hand manicured you get. When well, thank you for grace. I know that's always a delicate question, but you know, because I have some viewers that are new to wine, I thought it was important to, to put it out there for them. That's something that I 100% understand. And uh, uh, I, we, we don't want to be arrogant to say, ah, the, the wine is expensive and here is my justification. I totally get it. When you just consider a bottle of water and a, and a baguette of a bread, a piece of bread, you say, oh, to add a bottle of wine of this price, it's a commitment. I totally get it. But at the same time, to reach this, these fruits, we are talking again about the, one of the highest elevated blocks of Sonoma that the family, the Jackson, the Jackson family has decided to develop. We are talking about building the roads. In the, we are talking about protecting the blocks from the bears and from the different animals that can uh, attack your vineyards. We are talking about developing. Sometimes we are in some locations where the development to really plant the vines is extremely difficult. Just the development is extremely difficult in certain cases, not all the time, but quite often. And then you have to wait how many years, Wanda, to really time. produce the quality of fruit that we bring to this bottle. Usually, before 15 years, a vine, you cannot expect from a vine to produce what is supposed to develop when it's older. It's, the first 15 years is really preparing for the future. Not to say, of course, we do harvest those fruits when the vines are young, and we do something. We have mm -hmm. programs. But once it's reached a, a certain age, then we talk about intense it seems to be frozen a little. There we go. Okay. We are talking about developing the vineyards. So it's truly a long, long term development. And this, of course, is reflected at some point along with the demand for the, for the wine as well. So consideration. And despite that, uh, when you really have the experience to compare, because experience is a fruit of comparison. You can say, I know about something after you really compare. It could be painting, it could be uh, spaghetti bolognese, it can be any subject. Mm -hmm. But wine, once you have been able to compare uh, all the fantastic wines that you can find in the old world and other ones from the new world, and when sometimes you can be even shocked by some prices, you, sometimes you start to realize, okay, it comes at a cost. It comes at a exactly. cost. But we try to, we try to, we believe, and I hope I'm not uh, arrogant here, but we try to no, make, we try to make it still approachable. 400, over $400. We produce things sometimes that we cannot afford ourselves. <laughs> don't, don't think to open a bottle of Verité for every meal. It was definitely a special sure. occasion to be able for to open sure. one with you tonight. For sure. Well, for thank sure. you. <laughs> well, I'm glad, you know, we covered the romance of wine, truly the romance of wine, the business mm -hmm. of wine. Now, this is the point where I give you a moment to complain and vent a little. So you have a chance to wine with Wanda. Now you get to wine a little bit. 
<laughs> so is there something in wine? I mean, we all are so blessed to work in such a beautiful, exciting industry, but I think we all have things that drive us crazy, whether it's a trend, a oh. misconception that people may have. So is there something that you would just love to get off your chest, you know, today? I think, I mean, we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but I, we all believe, and as a family affair, wine is something really meant to be enjoyed and shared. Mm -hmm. And I think in the wine industry, which is normal because, you know, we're passionate people and we love to discuss wine, it really can get sort of overblown, overly nitpicky. And sometimes I, I, I feel like all the fuss about the details, we can sort of lose sight about what wine is meant for, which is to mm -hmm. open a bottle um, and, and share together. So yeah, it's, a, it's something you see, it's something you think about. And I think um, it's great to see, you know, commentators and people in the industry, you know, who are, who are knowledgeable and real connoisseurs of wine can discuss those things, but also don't lose sight of, um, of what wine is really for, which is to bring everyone around, around this That's bottle. right, I think that sometimes uh, when we are in certain uh, situations, sometimes it's taken too seriously. To my, yeah. to my, from my consideration, I think when you when when you are with a with a group, I'm not here talking about uh, doing the blend huh, here. One, I'm talking mm -hmm. about opening a bottle, opening a bottle, and really enjoy. Uh, I think it's very important for the end, any audience to feel welcome, to feel welcome by the wine. And not to be, and not in, to not so intimidated. Not by to be intimidated. Jar, okay. Too much jargon, you know, or too much underskin totally. melon peel. Stuff. I hope we smell and we taste grapes to start. Is <laughs> the single most important thing. Exactly. And uh, and very important for us that people are natural and they say if they like, if they don't like it, it. And after taking the time to really taste and compare, we can have, of course, an opinion, but we should welcome any opinions. I exactly. think it's, important. it's yes. so important. Well, thank you. I know you're jet lagged. Thank you for being so gracious with your time. I thank can't you. think, I mean, you're my season finale. So thank uh, you for helping me end my four months of Instagram lives on such a beautiful <laughs> note with such special wines. And like I said, I love a love story. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. I wish you many years of happiness, many more years of beautiful wines, and either Sonoma or Bordeaux, I will see you okay. one of these days. Okay. One of these Cheers. days. Take Cheers. care. Thank you. Take you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>